sometimes living in a society that's based market-based and has lots of advertising often creates in coming up with little limericks and little rhymes and little things to kind of stick in your mind so that you don't forget but you always have it in time so that you kind of go da 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 da, -da. and it kind of beats on you and kind of hits you in your emotions and tries to influence you to some direction other than God. <laughs> One of the cute expressions that I love when someone says to me is, uh, don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. And I thought, when I first time I heard it, I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense to me. And I didn't pay too much attention to it. Because at the time that I heard it, it just seemed to be kind of a foolish statement. And I didn't realize that so many people thought it was a real, true, accurate axiom or idea to live by. But if you think about it, think about what it's saying. Don't be so heavenly minded. So don't be heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Now, what does the earth have to do with being good? Jesus said, don't call anyone good except your father which is in heaven. What good is there on the earth? Are there good people? Really? Maybe on the outside. But have you looked on the inside? So, when I realized later that people thought that that was a true spiritual truth, I thought, no. And I started writing in and promoting this whole new concept or truth. Do, and this is my expression, be so heavenly minded that you are all earthly good. Because you see, when you bring heaven to earth, then you're earthly good. But if you're not heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. So throw out that stupid expression, don't be so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. I pray you become so heavenly minded, you're all earthly good. <laughs> In Spurgeon today, as we examine what God would say to us and how he would speak to us, although he doesn't speak in the King James, we know that because Spurgeon was a man of God and God used him in a way to teach pastors that he sometimes inspires in us a way to look at things in a different perspective so that God can use that as we find it fitting in our life today that he can give it to us from a perspective of a pastor's pastor of a teachers of ministers of a person who taught many men of God to go out and to do those things that God had called them to do. And so Spurgeon gives us that perspective from his point of view in sharing what God had worked in his life. And we uh, ask always that God would take it for us to apply it to us by his word speaking in it so that we would apply it to what God wants us to do today. Or as I like to say, if it fits, do it. <laughs> We know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Upon some points a believer is absolutely sure. He knows, for instance, that God sits in the stern sheets of the vessel when it rocks the most. He believes that an invisible hand is always on the world's tiller and that wherever providence may drift or whatever circumstances may come, Jehovah steers it. That reassuring knowledge prepares him for everything. He looks over the raging waters and sees the spirit of Jesus treading the billows, walking through the storm. And he hears a voice saying, it is I, be not afraid. He knows too that God is always wise. And by knowing this, he is confident that there can be no accidents and no mistakes. That nothing occur or can occur which ought not to arise, but it has been planned according to his will. He can say, if I should lose all I have, it is better that I should lose than have, if God so wills, the worst calamity to me, if God ordains it. So God, in his kindly dealings with me, prevents me from having the calamitous, if it's God's will, that he take away that which is bad for me. 
we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. The Christian does not merely hold this as a theory, but he knows it as a matter of fact. Everything has worked for good as yet, though it may not have appeared so to begin with. The poisonous drugs in fit proportions have worked the cure. Do we not build up antibodies from just a small amount of the same poison that works against us to kill us, actually prevents us from being infected? The sharp cuts of the lancet have cleansed out the proud flesh and facilitated the healing, though the pain may have been there. Every event has yet worked out the most divine blessing and blessed results. And so believing that God rules all, that he governs wisely, and that he brings good out of evil, the believer's heart is assured and he is enabled calmly to meet each trial as it comes. The believer can, in the spirit of true resignation, pray, Send me what thou wilt, my God, so long as it comes from you. Never can there be an ill portion from your table to any of your children. When you trust in the Lord with all your heart, leaning not into your own understanding and all your ways acknowledging him and letting him direct your path as he chooses to, as he said he would, as he has promised he does, then you can rest assured that in all the circumstances, though you may not know it at the moment, in the volume of time, you will see that it was the best that you went through in order to understand his will and see him in a better way that makes him more personal to you, not just for tomorrow, but for today. Because as you trust, then he reveals himself more and more each and every day as you learn to trust him in everything and in every way. I can't think of any better way to be so heavenly minded than to trust him in every way. Because if you do, then today you might do some earthly good.